Welcome back to the Talosive EV Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. The factories are closed, and I'm here with Nick and Randy. How are you? Well, hi, Drew. How are you? It's good good to see you again uh, in person, actually, because of all this of this hashtag corona issues. We yes. are in person, just like we planned months ago. We got our in-person meetup going. So good to see you, Drew. Nice handshake. <laughs> good to see you. Great. I'm glad mm. we finally got to meet up. And yes. later we might drive the Tesla around or just Randy. Maybe. Just or Randy just will. Randy. <laughs> I have my <laughs> Tesla. Uh, I haven't checked yet. I wanted to save until we started recording. But last night I plugged in the uh, the 110. Oh, my goodness. Just to remind people, we're doing a test with the Model 3 because Randy's obviously like most of us and he's in quarantine. And we're just trying to see what kind of battery drain there is when the car is not plugged in, not driving, and just sitting in the garage. So this is the weekly update with Randy on the Model 3. Has it moved since the last time we rolled? It died. Um, well, it didn't die, what? but it, it it dropped about a percent to two percent um, in colder climates. It got mm. it, the battery was degrading. Two percent a so, day or an hour? Uh, no, 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 a day. Like most. Okay, okay. So your That's range would awesome. go down like a few miles. One one, one percent more realistically, but at overnight mm-hmm. it was it was dropping pretty quick. So I have I. I went down two percent last night, and so now I I actually plugged it in at nineteen percent, and mm. I had mm. a software update. I did not get the stopping at the stoplights. Oh no! Barely I know. anyone has that. It's like only I, know. One I was or hoping I was people. barely one of those people. But <laughs> but for those who in, don't know, we should fill them in on what that update is. Yes, I have sure. lots of things to say about this because this was go ahead, topic. Nick. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those who don't know. Tesla has their uh, insider program. What do they call it? Darn it! I, sh- I was I just beta program was, something like beta, that. Yeah, beta program. Yeah. Really early insider or something. Anyway, yeah, they give a certain number of people who are the very most loyal Tesla fans who bought you know whatever whatever point and they're special for some reason. The they're elite, not. the elite Tesla fans. They get very limited beta updates before everyone else, and some of these people got this new stoplight update where you can be driving down a surface street, Randy, not a highway, a surface street, and <laughs> double-click the uh, the stock to put it into F- F- uh, autopilot, not FSD, um, and it'll be driving down the street, and, you know, on a typical American street, you have stoplights every block, and the car will detect those stoplights, and instead of stopping or going and making that decision... It obviously knows if it's green or red because, you know, cameras aren't blind. But they want to make sure that you're paying attention and not falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So they uh, ask you at every single stoplight, is it safe to go or not? And you either do that by pushing the accelerator a little bit or by double tapping tapping the stock again to confirm. Unless it's red. Unless it's red, at which point it will always stop. stop. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. So you cannot so. run a red light <laughs> unless uh, you just floored the accelerator and ignored the Took autopilot, it out of autopilot stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I'm glad to see that even in early access form they are testing this because um, I am not a Model Three owner. But Randy, can you attest what? to the no number way. of times You're autopilot you have owner, to? I've, you have an EV show. You have. I to have, have a, Model a Model S Hot Wheel. So I'm, well, I'm I have a Model fine. Three model in my background. So that's great. I, I am didn't a claim Model otherwise. Three modeler. But Randy, when you're using autopilot, do you have to disengage it quite regularly for the stop signs and the stoplights? I uh, I do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I have, if the cameras enabled you to obviously <laughs> stop when it was red by default, would you use that or? It's not a I hard question. I would probably. <laughs> I would probably um, – I got my morning cup of joe now. Oh, good. Now he's ready. Um, now I'm <laughs> it's ready. It's only 12.30. Let the record show it's 12.30 p.m. <laughs> the but I recording. went to bed at 4. So. <laughs> okay. Which is got why it, you're gotcha. wearing your morning clothing, Randy. <laughs> oh, that's right because we're on camera now. So this is – this is uh, this is yes. For um, some, yes. Okay. So would I use it – would I – if I had to – honestly – no, no, 
because when I'm not on the freeway, in my use case specifically, I'm mm-hmm. so close to the freeway, I don't need to turn it on. And I'm at an intersection. And until I can do 90 degree turns without me having to do anything, I ain't really going to worry about it. Mm. That's, that's, that's my... So that's you wouldn't use this do. feature? I, no, it's not that I would. I'll definitely give it... I, I would... Mm. I would use the feature. Um, He's really thinking would, about it. I am because because it's. I paid for it, so it's like all right, it's there. Yeah, you'll have it. <laughs> I have it, and so I want to use it, but I'm also very much aware of early stages, and I don't want the whole point of full self driving is I want to do less, not more, and I don't want to boom boom do do do. I don't want to. I don't want to play music on the steering wheel or on the foot, <laughs> on the accelerator. I don't want to. Do, I just want it to go. Well. And if you make me do more, I'm probably just gonna hold the steering wheel and just drive. <laughs> like a. I don't think it's more. In a way, you're just saying yes or no to the car instead of having to actually steer and press the brake or let it roll to a stop. But um, this I, is a substantial step closer to full self driving. It's not the full self-driving but i think we need i would do it strictly as me being a beta tester and that my information is being reported back to tesla i regardless of me wanting to do it i feel like i have an obligation to do it because i paid for it and i need it (laughs) i have to say that for the areas i drive around in even though i don't have autopilot that would be immensely helpful because i don't see intersections always as places that i have to turn there are a ton of places with intersections that I have to – it's just straight, like big, big stretches of road that go through town, and it's just light after light after light. And that would prevent me from using autopilot very much there because uh, I'd always have to turn it off and stop at the red light or the stop sign. Um, just different places I've been where it's like, yeah, if the car could automatically detect, hey, the light is red, that's just another one of those – like. The car can see the light. It shows me on the display that it's a red light. It knows it is. Mm -hmm. Why not react to it? Like, that's just common sense at this point. They'll get there. It's baby steps. Baby baby steps. I like the idea of of when the car is driving itself that I, I, I still... Keep my eyes on the road 100% of the time. And n- n- that's not doing the PC thing. Like, oh, keep your eyes on the road. Like, I still do it because... You should. Of, because I'm paranoid. <laughs> it's the I'm law. Just, yes. Well, it is the law. But, like, I know... I'm speaking from... I know people who don't do that. And they just like, you know what? Elon, take the wheel. And just, <laughs> and just, Elon, and take just, the wheel. I love it. <laughs> and they just go into it so aggressively, like just they go to sleep. They, they, There's those they videos. Go, boom, boom. The, so anyway, guys, like sleeping. I was saying, they just turn around. You did that the first time. I do <laughs> it to prove. A, I do it to prove a point. They do it unironically. Mm. Oh, is that the difference? You're I, ironic. We knew you were ironic, Randy. There was no question I did it, in my mind. That you when were I an did it, it's because being. when I did it, it's because there was a camera on me, and I'm like, all right, this is this is good for inter-. But much as when the camera's off, we were all very much like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were very paranoid. You know, yes. like and the so, first uh, two seconds we turn around while we're not paying attention to the road is really funny. But you notice we never. T- looked away from the road for more than about three seconds and then we immediately no. look back <laughs> so and I there were people, people in the back seat watching the road i was in the back seat watching the road the entire time so for totally yeah. so somebody's road, eyes was constantly was on watching the road. the road the entire time nick could take over at any well, point I, because of how i, I long could have reached that were. far because i'm a monster yes. you could drive the car from the back seat i, I honestly could <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is why the model 3 still might be perfect for you then <laughs> For my selfishness so, that I don't Speaking want more grandly, I don't know if I've asked you this recently, but um, I did a video I love speaking uh, for grandly. the EV channel. Today we on shall about commence the uh, amazing grandness of the how Grand, grand Republic, of you, Nick. The army of the Grand Republic. Thank you. I appreciate your grandness. But if Thank there you. were updates made to the Model 3 in 2020... Uh, And kind of what my video was, was basically saying, let's take a bunch of these awesome features from the Model Y and bring it to the 3. Are there things that you would change about the Model 3 now that you've owned it for how many months? 
Oh, Randy, Randy, not Nick specifically. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> and have Nick an opinion, just... and it's more it's valid. It's more. You, you need to share your some of your. First. Okay, um, the <laughs> just because you're talking of... up a storm right now. <laughs> I know I'm talkative. Like the entire tech podcast, I said three words, but now we're talking we about Turkish EV, delight, and I had Turkish delight. So I am I am ready and rolling. Anyone who doesn't know what that is should listen to the food podcast. Which that episode may or may not be up by now. Oh um, my god, Nick, talk! <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're plugging right now. Um, the Model Three You're things that they should change. Obviously, get a heat <laughs> pump. Um, obviously, get that front radar uh, protector. But I think something heater. that uh, yeah, heater. Uh, what you really missed, Drew, um, the Model Three updates. They need to just redesign it, make it Cyber 3. Cyber 3, that's what we need. <laughs> he just wants a giant stainless steel. Yes, sedan. please. Cyber that 3. That might tie into another topic we get to. <laughs> okay, we'll but get to that later. How about, how about you, Randy, now that you've actually owned it for this long? I've owned it for nine months. Oh, really? Okay. We've hit nine Over months. Over nine months. Uh, it's a baby. Has it been that? Has it been It's that a baby. <laughs> it's, it's a baby. It's a newborn. <laughs> so what what would you change what changes Why is do you have baby not born at nine months i don't know <laughs> it is um so okay uh i, I just I, I was just taken back by oh. two things one i've owned it for nine months mm-hmm. so that's crazy to you think said about. that before that is weird two um nick when he was giving his input he he brought nothing to the table he was just talking <laughs> the whole time i just realized that he had nothing valuable cyber three that was all i took from that i'm that surprised he talked that he talked that long and and gave nothing to work off of it's just, <laughs> so um here's what i here's what i would change uh, uh just to specify are we saying in comparison to to a different model like the model y or just in general what i would change no, like let's say they've done nothing with the Model 3 in 2020 so far, and okay. there's changes they bring to Teslas each year. Let's say they're looking to make some changes to the Model 3 because, you know, factories are closed right now. they got to swap out parts and stuff. What changes do you say they should make? Uh, first one that I think of that I use every single day, and I would l- – it, it's tiring. Um, I don't like putting – greasy fingers on my wrap or on and i don't like people touching mm-hmm. my car besides the handle um please have a power trunk <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah that would be a big power one. truck and close it that that's my, that's my biggest because i use it every single day and i trunk so too while you were at touch it? it huh would you want powered frunk while we're at it i mean yeah okay <laughs> it, it, if if our costs aren't going to go up that much, sure. I don't really touch the frunk as much as um, as much as I thought I would, which is fine. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely uh, an extra extra storage unit that I would put things at. I don't mm-hmm. care. It's going to rumble around. Stuff in that I put in the trunk is definitely like you know food, groceries, my my work stuff. I use it every single day, and if I could just use the power feature of it, uh, that would just make. Do you me like feel those little clean. foot foot things where you swipe under it? I'm so wait. What have you seen those cars where you swipe your foot under the bumper and then it oh, automatically yeah, yeah. opens? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you yeah. want that? No, it I just know with your phone. Yeah, I would want it from the phone, and I would want actually what I would really want them to do for everything is give me Apple Watch support so I could do it for my watch. Ooh, mm. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah, I would. Was I would love to have dedicated quick features, or if you're going to give me the widget, which I do, and the widget sucks on iPhone. <laughs> if if I can have the widget customized, where I can tell what buttons I want it to actually map it to, that then fix that. So there's a software thing that I just want them to do across the lineup. But mm. um, right now the widget is crap. I hate it. But I would love to have uh, Apple Watch support where I can have my most like cool the cabin or heat up the cabin like bring the cabin to the temperature i regulate it pop mm. the trunk um automatically like do the power lifting and closing um so there's that one okay. i would not mind having uh seat coolers it just as a Ooh, option okay. that'd be okay. nice yeah. something from the x I, the I like. S, yeah the, the nicer the x has that, right? it I would, I would like. It would be cool to have it, just because sometimes I don't want to blast the AC to cool the cabin out. Sometimes I just want. And I remember in summer. I've never been in a car with cooled seats. How does that work? It's uh, amazing. It's just like, it's just like <laughs> blows air. It, it's, it's, it's like, like and it. Just, you know how you lay on a bed are, that has it, like that 
fr- freezer feeling like, oh, here's the cold side of a, the pillow or yeah. the mattress or something. Mm-hmm. It's so like is it, that, is it changing blowing. the temperature of the seats itself or are there actual no. like air vents on the it's, seat? It's blowing air through. I mean, the ones that I've had experience with, I don't know about the Model S or it's, X, it, but it, it, it's like blowing air right, conditioned air through your seat. Mm. So you yes. get okay. like a little bit of wind down there and it's just kind of nice. Yep. You don't get keeps you from sweating if you know. Yeah, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you down there. Nice. What, what's the advantage to that over just climate uh, controlling the cabin? Um, my it's wife doesn't direct, like it. She doesn't know? like having air constantly. Like she take my vent. I don't want it, but it's too cold. It's too this. <laughs> it, it's my more. Wife does that exact same thing in art. So <laughs> it always points them towards me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This actually, um, so the the, the cabin temperature will pretty much still be the same, but you, yeah. you're regulating your body more at that point. So it's it's nice. I, I wouldn't mind to have that. Um, okay. It's not a necessity by any means, but it'd be cool. Uh, I definitely, if there's one thing, I, I don't know why I'm limiting myself but to one, but if it was one, it would be the trunk first and foremost before anything else. That seems a very popular a aftermarket. Pump? A heat pump. I mean, I, you're, you're I, in San Diego. No one cares about that, huh? Yeah, I don't heat care pump about isn't that. a big deal. I, I, for my use case, I, I am in my trunk every single day. Um, that's where I, I put the, the power cables. That's where I, I put everything. And I'm mm-hmm. and one thing I just, I'm tired of it because I know for me, like I put just, I see my my, my finger imprints just on the wrap. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, don't touch it. It's gross. So These that's, problems, that's my big, biggest thing. White car people don't have <laughs> mm-hmm. this is true my my white car you don't see any of the little streaks on it i don't see black any would of also probably do that huh black maybe but i don't have yeah. any of those issues because our paint's falling off in the first place so <laughs> it all just blends into one i don't even think about it but so is it is there anything else or are those the two biggest ones do you care about the wireless charger the USB-C, or the i do i do but i i, I feel like um it's not a reason to upgrade it. your fifty thousand dollar car. Well, it's not an upgrade. <laughs> I, I, I feel like no, no. Um, they they uh, maybe we. I thought we talked about it. Um, I, I feel like that's going to be standard at some point, really, really soon. Um, I'd hope like so. Really, really soon. I feel like the if you have a phone that doesn't wirelessly charge, that's the niche product now. You know, like well, I think that, anyone who's like you got to remember. People are buying these cars and they're going to have them for eight years plus. So to to adapt to the future of technology is probably how cars should be, not saying, well, people use USB-A ports now. It's like, yeah, but we're not going to keep using them forever. So that the fact that the Model Y is up to date with that makes sense to me. I just wish they would bring that to the three as well. I I agree. I would. I, it's just not a – I don't think about – which USB port it is because it's it's I set it down and I don't care about fast charging like that, especially knowing mm-hmm. what it does to your battery. I I care more about preservation of battery. Also mm-hmm. because if it's doing a faster charge to your phone, I have noticed um, a quicker battery degradation on not degradation but like well yeah no it's, it's depleting my battery on my car. My wife and I have taken our phones off of the wireless charger and we just put them in the cup holder when we were running low doing a road trip back. Uh, oh, really? ago, uh, about like a month or two ago and we're like oh man we're gonna get home at seven percent you know <laughs> and it's just like oh my god and we took our phones off of the wireless chargers and immediately like we just i stopped i i was in this like one percent another percent and i was watching the battery just die and then it stopped mm-hmm. even though i had heaters on and I was like, oh, maybe we had to turn off the heater. Nope, the heater <laughs> did not affect my battery. Hmm. Me charging my phone, our phones, that's what was How much affected. of that is placebo? There's no way the wireless charger uses more than the heater. No, but... I don't believe you. I do have it's fast charging. Five watts at like 24 amps, though. It's, it's, well, this one is more than... Watts, higher, higher than five because I have the fast charging. And well, seven mm-hmm. and a half watts is the highest. So seven and a half ever. constantly at, juicing. At 24 you. amps, though. That's the thing. Like, it'll it'll... Take your amps away, which is the problem. Amp hmm. is it's, watt. Watt is how big the pipe is. Amp is how fast energy is flowing through the pipe. Yes. Oh, so something interesting I read about the Model Y USB C ports is that they are 15 watt. <gasps> so Ooh. that means you could charge your iPad off nice. them if you have a iPad 
with a so USB-C cable. Are you cable. telling me that the Model Y just became the world's largest mobile battery pack for the iPad? Yes. Mm, yeah, Model X could do it, or the Tesla Semi, but we'll see. But they don't we'll have USB-C ports. Do they? That's the question. <gasps> I bet you the Semi. <laughs> <laughs> but Speaking of the have? Semi, I have a uh, dilemma for you that I was asking okay. a few people recently. I love dilemmas. So Tesla wants to sell cars, obviously. They want to get more vehicles on the road, what? switching to more sustainable energy. And semi truck that's coming up. It might get delayed or whatever, but you know, once the semi truck is available, I think their goal would be for more people to switch to it. Right? They want people buying the semi. So one thing semi trucks are commonly used for these days is hauling gasoline or fuel <laughs> to gas stations. Oh, I see where so this is going. So for the sake of cost savings. <laughs> um, and to say that there's a lot of gas stations, and even if the Tesla Semi comes out, it's not going to replace all gas stations. You know, it's going to take a while before we don't need gas uh, at all. You guys, we've talked about this on our show several times. You think gas cars are going to be around for our, the rest of our lives, some of you. <laughs> and so does wow. that mean the Tesla Semi should be allowed to move gas around? Or do you think the companies I mean, that do that will just not do it for the sake of the image? You can be allowed to move gas around. Oh, well, of course they're allowed to. Like, you know, do whatever it, they Does that support Tesla's vision, though, of, like, we want to accelerate yeah. our, our sustainable dependence yeah. on yes, it sustainable yes. future? And if because. there's semi-trucks driving gasoline to gas stations, is that helping that – and vision that they have is that yes, supporting their because goal for every if if the gas transport industry is large enough where you know what, what you're saying it's a large percentage of the transportation if tesla was able to switch even a large percentage of those transport vehicles to electric semis that's saving quite a bit of carbon emissions there which is their main goal and each one of those semi sales is going to be contributing to their profitability and helping them drive their company even quicker into fully sustainable uh, mode. But they're being used to fuel the beasts. Yeah, but those beasts, are, their time <laughs> has passed. It's like, it's a harmless but, little... So why uh, help them? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a totally different conversation. I think, oh, ah. Uh, I don't know. I ran out of things to say. Go, Randy. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm being patient. I think it should because they're a business and there's money in it, and they're you can you can still coexist knowing that one's going to die. And mm -hmm. I think of samsung displays and apple products or when microsoft bailed out apple in the 90s mm -hmm. the, it, it's it's gas is its competitor but it is ignorant to say that it's just gonna go away like that especially today it should definitely mm -hmm. do it today maybe in some incremental like a couple decades from now phase it out for sure like ah, mm -hmm. it's we don't need that but um to, to pretend like, ah, oh, gas, we don't know what that is. I do that all the time as a joke, but like to actually, as a business thing, like if there's, if there's money there for, for Tesla to make as a business, you should do it because I would rather Tesla handle the gas than any other random semi because imagine the tech that it has to identify um, the, 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 not the cartridge, so I've, I, the the chambers that it's being held in, and and mm -hmm. um, you know keep, maybe even keeping it safe. Like, what if they have built their own thing where it's like, oh, this thing tips over, you don't have to worry about a spillage or things blowing up or or something like that. So mm -hmm. um, overall, I feel like um, I, I feel like they could do it as a business as for a business reason, but also because um, it's good marketing. Hey, Tesla. No publicity or bad publicity is still good publicity because hey, <laughs> an electric car is moving gas is like yes because we're the future we're gonna help them phase up. I think it's mm -hmm. I think it's funny. I think it's like even I think it's even funny EVs too. EVs are moving are doing this better than 
gas vehicles. We can go further. And then you can use that as a good PR. It's like, look how much, look at our, like, our range we can do. I mostly agree with you. I don't think Tesla would ever say no to a customer that wants to buy their product. Especially but, for $250,000 or $150,000. Yeah, hey. yeah 150, 180. But uh, I'll play After devil's advocate. After you pay me the money, what you here. do with it is your business. You can wrap yeah. it, you can put gas in it. I don't care. I'll play devil's advocate here. Um, wouldn't that be such a terrible image for the company doing the trucking, though? Because it's, totally. it's saying our business <laughs> is delivering gasoline to as many places, but we ourselves admit that using an electric vehicle is more cost effective, but we're going to continue selling gas. Like, don't you think, like, maybe that's the question I should be asking. Not should it be allowed, because I think we're all in agreement. Tesla doesn't care what they use the semi for. Someone could take it to the Nürburgring if they wanted. Whatever. But <laughs> if, if uh, the world's fastest do, semi. do you think any gas company will use a semi? Just one. Okay, so here's, yes. here's, here's the main question. Here. <laughs> I don't know how gas supply chains work. Um, I believe some of the larger chains have their own truckers that, you know, take the gas in and it's not like a third party. But I also know that there are like third party, you know, A1 unleaded gasoline or whatever that delivers gasoline to all the gas stations. Um, so I'm not sure if that mom and pop type setup would switch over to uh, the semi. But I think like I keep going back to come and go. They're a great, uh, I, I really, I'm sorry, I, I, I've been a fan of Phillips 66 as far as like gas station brand loyalties are uh, mm -hmm. concerned, but I'm becoming more and more, more of a fan of come and go because they're starting to realize the future of their business. Like no other, no other gas station I've seen has realized their future. The future of the gas station is that convenience store that, uh, in that in that real estate and so they're turning some come and go is turning a lot of their empty parking spots just around their store into supercharging locations and so because that's think so easy to do <laughs> it is it literally just connects some wires and invite tesla we got power property. everywhere tesla yeah. pays for it you know it doesn't even cost it just they have to let tesla use the land right and so anyway it's that's the future of a gas station in my mind, at least for the next 20 years when we're hybrid EV and gasoline. There's still going to be gas stations, but mm -hmm. they're going to be hybrids because, you know, if you're going to go charge, supercharge somewhere, of course the mall is going to be a better place. But, like, if you don't want to drive all the way down to the mall and there's a gas station in your neighborhood or, and that they have a supercharger, um, you go in there and you run to the convenience store and grab, you know... Uh, a cup of coffee and a bag of chips or whatever, you know, the convenience store, um, nail clippers, whatever you buy at the convenience store. That's just examples of things that I buy at the convenience store. Com um, commercial clipper. businesses aren't going anywhere. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you charge up for a little while and then you're done in 10 minutes because V3 supercharging is awesome. And, and you're on your way, just like a, just like a regular gas car. And that's the future mm -hmm. of the gas station model. And so I think that those larger chains will realize, okay, well, these electric stalls in our back are like becoming our primary source of revenue because we get a percentage of whatever Tesla, you know, charges per kilowatt hour and that's big. And they get the revenue of the store. So they'll be like, okay, this is the future. And the semi truck just makes sense on paper, like from a financial operating cost perspective, yeah. they could have, you know, autonomous at some point and for sure the fleet, you know, the, uh, the fleet of three or four of them together. And like, autopilot could of... let truckers work for longer hours as well. Exactly. Yeah. And anyway, it, it's a no brainer. Run them but to the ground is what I, I don't, say. I don't know if the little <laughs> ones truckers in that autopilot. I've been on the road for 10 hours. Now you can do 12. Easy. <laughs> Profits, you're not even. Profits. You're not even driving. Does... Oh, they must. Watching cacti. Never mind. I'm not even going to ask that question. It was so stupid. <laughs> um, oh, but, please do. Humor me. Okay. Because it was so stupid, I was about to say, do semi-trucks have cruise control? <laughs> That is so but stupid, Drew. Oh my gosh! I've never Drew. driven that one, is so, so stupid. I, I assume How they would. You be that stupid. Given the the truck spends ninety percent of its time going straight on a highway, they probably <laughs> don't have to put their foot there the whole time, right? Um, no. But do they have? Do any of them have adaptive cruise control that like brakes and some of the newer accelerates? Ones do. I'd imagine. No way. I don't no? think so. Like, on like Hondas for a long time or whatever, so like why uh, wouldn't Hondas front different line? than a semi though? How okay, come none of the semis, semis on the road don't. now look like they they have the 
adaptive cruise control features. They always look so industrial and rugged. It's like, yeah, I don't see any sensors on that thing that would like detect what's ahead of it. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a few models. Oh, let's see. I'm sure Frontliner we sh- has a website, right? Front, front Nick, liner. pull that up. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Okay. Radio. Uh, Nick, so people will me, yeah. use it. Hey, uh, Nick, can you pull that up for me? <laughs> um, you know, we'd, we'd never seen a primate at its full potential because they don't work out. <laughs> Ooh. Ouch. Did you say, Randy, did you say yes, they would use the semi? The Tesla semi? They, they, who's they? The gas people? The, the, <laughs> the gas, gas truckers. People. Yes. I would say they 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 would use them because Tesla can give them the same give the the businesses the same incentives they give us the consumer for taxes mm. and everything. I think I think I think there's a uh, a benefit because at the end of the day, I don't think gas truckers or whatever like I don't think they're. I think their business model is not that we sell you gas; it's that we're moving a product from one location to another. They don't really care what the mm. product is. Like it's 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 the Middle East that cares about the oil. America, yeah, yeah. Like, we'll we'll sell what we got. We'll move and sell what we got to do. So I think whatever company is moving things to gas stations, which would eventually become maybe you know charging stations, whatever moves the industry mm-hmm. forward and and it, and it gives them the, the 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 business to do so. I think they would right. do it just because like hey, you know what? Sure, we. I mean, if it's more if it's more cost efficient to do it this way and the numbers okay. work out. Screw it. I mean, you, uh, our client right now is AMPM or Shell or Chevron, and, mm-hmm. and that's what you want to buy from me, and we're bringing it to you, and we're just and we're just uh, the the distribution factory at this point. If that's what you're ordering, I don't care what you're ordering. My job is to bring it to you, no more than you know uh, Amazon bringing their shipments to things the same way. I don't care what you bought. It's my job mm. to deliver it to you as quickly as possible in the most efficient way possible with everything still intact. If you're buying water. All right, there you go. So I, I, in that sense, I could see um, gas companies using them too, just because it's if it, if the if the numbers work out and it's more cost effective that way. So it's kind of like the Olympics uh, promoting McDonald's, you know. <laughs> exactly. Remember when that happened? When like McDonald's no was the official no sponsor? I, I remember watching all those advertisements, and I'm like. Okay, I'm, I must not be the only person who's saying there's no way that guy eats at McDonald's <laughs> despite <laughs> him like with a coke and he's like, "Be sure check out McDonald's for being the official sponsor of the." It's like, yeah, no, I mean I like McDonald's, but that's <laughs> it's just kind of weird, you know. That's that's yeah. how I would feel, um, and I think it would be huge news. I think how do you guys think the media would respond? Okay, let's get a let's get around the fact that yeah, probably uh, gas companies looking for cost effective measures would buy a Tesla semi to save money, and yeah, they're just they're not looking at it as we're promoting gas, we're just delivering a product to a consumer. Do you think the media would go after Tesla and or uh, the gas companies for that combo of an electric semi driving? Big tanks of gas. You think, I think they're they'll like, get Elon, clicks. Yeah. this isn't helping. I, th- <laughs> I think they'll have their, their memes for a moment. I think they'll get their clicks out of it. Like, hey, look what they're doing. And then I think they'll just, you know, move on because – I, I don't I don't know it's I don't think it's it's damning to the 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 PR to the brand mm-hmm. or anything like that because of our is EVs are still very niche right now I think long term it's like why are we still why are we still doing this like when when you when you sit there and you go I don't know why we have a need for this uh, my only analogy that I can use uh, or a, a comparison. I've always thought, why do we still have pennies? We don't use pennies. <laughs> why? why do we still have cash? That's the rule. It, co- it costs more to make the penny than the penny itself. And uh, and, and uh, Drew, I think you brought it up many, many times at this point, that tradition. People are just scared of change. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like, but when, when you we bring up enough logic, at one point people at least go, yeah. I don't know i don't know anymore and i feel like at that point when it gets to that with evs and semis moving gas and like why are we bringing this barbaric old chemical right like we don't need this we don't need this stuff 
And they're like, oh yeah, you're probably right. And then, then I think at that point they'll be like, all right, they need to cut the cut the time. If if it's like the 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 new version of these smoking companies and packs of cigarettes, it's like <laughs> I don't want to be affiliated with you guys. I can see how maybe at some point it's like, all right, you're you're killing the environment or you're killing people. I mean, at this point, it's what Tesla has on their side, what EVs have on their side is is just logic that. Look at all the cost-effective measures that you save long-term by moving away from gasoline mm-hmm. and oil. And I think as long as they present the same logic to everything going forward, I can see, I, I, I can see everything just moving away from it. But for we need that transitionary period, however long True. that may be. But I don't think it's going to hurt them as bad as it, it, it could. Maybe long-term, it, it could be like, okay, guys. We we gotta you know cut, kill the headphone jack. You know what I mean? Like just let it go. Yeah. Well, like if we got to a point where there were certain people still using gas, but pretty much everybody who was tanking gas around was using Tesla semis. You know, like <laughs> you get to that point where Tesla can make the call and start saying, you know, you know, let's stop selling them for that reason. Yeah. We're just gonna ban it. Um, I don't know. Maybe the banning thing it's, is my it's like recurring strangling it, topic. <laughs> So yeah. I, I did. it's kind of the the mirrored situation of diesel semi trucks delivering Teslas now. You know, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. it's kind of backwards when you see all the Teslas on the traditional semi truck or a Tesla mobile service using these Ford vans. You know, it's like, well, we have to do yeah. that now, but in the future, I throw up in my mouth a little bit every time I see that. It's kind of Here's weird. Here's some huh? new model wide deliveries, and I'm like, I want to know not a Tesla at what semi. point. That decision was made for like Tesla as a company. When was when was like the mobile service teams like? So we need some cars to move parts around and deliver them to people. And I'm like, so what cars do we get? We use our own cars, right? Well, our cars are kind of expensive. We're going to need more cars than that. So what do we do? Um, <laughs> let's <laughs> check like, out this. <laughs> kind of like remember when uh, Windows had their Windows stores. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll only talk about Apple and consumer tech worlds on the EV podcast. Um, they they used iPads for their POS stuff for a little while, and it was just like, what? You're Ooh. you're at a Windows store buying a Windows computer, and the payment is processed on an iPad. That's just womp right womp. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. That so was kind of weird. For you. <laughs> I did go ahead and uh, look up uh, Freightliner. I know we're kind of a few minutes beyond it, but I thought it was kind of cool. So I'm going to bring it up, okay? Um, go ahead. Their, uh, <laughs> their Freightliner, uh, which is a brand of semi-trucks, uh, the sleeper cab Casadilla, Cas- Cas- um, is actually kind of high-tech. Like I, I wouldn't have expected okay. it to be this high-tech. So they have uh, radars and cameras in the front. Good. And those radars and cameras detect. Um, what did I do with the screenshot? Darn it! The screenshot disappeared. Where'd it go? Anyway, the uh, they detect. Um, there we go. They have uh, lane warning departure, lane Good. departure warning, which okay. is it's really just annoying. Honestly, I I've used cars that have lane departure warning, and it's like the most passive thing ever. It's like you're driving and you either intentionally or unintentionally go across the line. It's like beep, 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 beep. Or sometimes you're going around a corner. It's like beep, 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 beep. It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. well, you you saw it, but you didn't do anything about it. And so it kind of makes it feel like the car is a little stupid. So it's nice that it has that, I guess. They also have adaptive Mm -hmm. cruise control, ACC, um, which is nice. And they also have... I knew that was a stupid question. ABA, active brake assist, whatever that is. So I guess it'll stop based on the radar. So they're more techie than I think we're giving them credit, but... They like don't what have is two the? Screens. They don't have two screens though. That's the problem. <laughs> what is the most techie semi that's not a Tesla? This is this is it. Like, it's the Freightliner. It's their premium sleeper cab, Freightliner Casienda. That's what we should be talking about. Tesla semi's biggest competitor. What's the Ford F one fifty of semis? Casienda. Okay. Casienda. Casienda. <laughs> Okay. Nice, so, um, like they, they did a good uh, job with their marketing. I like the pictures. I don't have an, a, a smooth transition for this. So I'm just going to abruptly change it. Uh, what? You're wrecking it, Randy. St- stop, stop, looking away. stop looking away. What? 
This is what he does <laughs> this all is the time. Perfect now, time for you an forgot, ad break. You forgot Look we're being that. recorded, don't you? Now people this can is see an what you do. Ad break go, time. Jeez, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. God. Plop it on me, Randy. I want to know. Okay. Uh, Tesla needs to bring back uh, more color options again. <gasps> Which ones specifically? Ooh. All of them. Like all of the ones they've ever <laughs> done, or all of the colors of the rainbow. All the ones that they've done, and then some maybe. Okay. Which what, ones have which they? Ones have they there's the beige one, which there's I'm actually really one. glad Ugly they got brown rid of. Model S. I do not oh, want that yeah. color back. There's a Model S in my area that has like this ugly greenish brownish exterior and i'm like i'm glad they don't make those anymore that one looks weird <laughs> but if we're talking about silver well, on the model three totally agree with you silver on the model three silver ah uh, beautiful most beautifulest car ever would you have got that Very beautiful. color if it was a thing no i would have uh actually that was one of my options yeah i was going through our old um gr- uh group like photos Long story short, I was clearing out space on my phone, and I was like, uh-huh. why is iCloud so much on messages? And then it's like, oh, podcast group. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm like, and I saw these screenshots I sent you after we first drove our first Tesla uh, mm-hmm. two years ago. I I remember seeing, sending you guys some screenshots of different configurations, and it was either the silver one or the... the, the, the Midnight Green. I'm Midnight so I know. Space See, you're metal. doing space, it too. Space I was going to space. Apple words. I midnight. was midnight. <laughs> midnight black metallic. Midnight the metallic, metallic one. The, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, it was yeah, either yeah. that one, the one that we rented, or the silver one. Yeah, and uh, was I was torn between the two, and to this day, I, 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 I liked. I still like both of those. Um, I, I think I would have. It would have been. If we had more color options, I don't think I would have wrapped my car. That's okay. the point I'm, I'm going to get it uh, wow. first. You wouldn't yeah. have wrapped? No, huh. I don't think so. I would have put a, a clear coat. I would have put a protective wrap on it, I'm sure. But I would not mm-hmm. have just drastically been obnoxiously different texture, different color. Take that. Yeah. I, I want it mine to be unique. But it's more so because I don't like boring colors. I'm tired of black. I'm tired of... Blue, Matt green, green, and white. I want it more I colors, and I don't see them as much as you do. Maybe that's why I think yeah. they look amazing. Every <laughs> single one. Maybe, sure. Have you seen those new but, Model Y? Those red Model Y shots. Someone like got a Model Y delivered and it was red, and the pictures. I think were it's like the Chrome Delete, the matte black trim. HDR. It oh. makes that red look oh. delicious. Oh, but so delicious. I'll I'll be the oddball out. And suggest this, but I wouldn't mind if it was like an off menu thing, like you had to call in to get it. But I would buy a Tesla without any paint, just the what? the sheer metal. I saw that. Have you seen that video they uploaded that like Model Y deliveries have begun and they show like before it's in the paint shop and they're just kind of assembling it? I like that look, I think that really? looks fine. And if it saves money, I need to see this. I need to see pictures of this. What are you talking about? Um. It's hey, a uh, Nick, can you pull, pull that up for us? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, so Why if you go to Tesla's up? YouTube channel, um, I saw the look of it, and I was like, you know, that doesn't look that bad. And they go through a lot of work to get that paint right. I know it's for protection and stuff, but also I just think it looks great. I'd be totally fine with that look. I'm, I am I like the idea of, of options, first and foremost. Give me the option. Yeah. Sure. I mean, hey, if you want no paint oh, on it. Oh, no my gosh. Send it to me. Oh. <laughs> Screenshot oh. and send it to, it to the group chat. Oh, no, but I'm I mean... enjoying this video. Oh. <laughs> Nick. That's beautiful. It's <laughs> Okay, now, now you're clickbaiting me. Oh, my it kinda, gosh. It kind of has a cyber truck texture yes, look to it, but it's, it's, it's not cyber, stainless steel. It's the so Cyber 3 that I was asking for. This is I imagine God, it, Nick. Would not, it would not look – it would probably not age very well is my point. No, it probably wouldn't be very durable. <laughs> Oh, no, it's beautiful. All right, what, what, why, why is it's like is the silver one, but it's not like painted silver. It's like actually the metal. That's what I like about the Cybertruck. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. It's just the color of the metal itself. Okay, and now I'm gonna I'm watch the entire Model Y video because this is good. Oh, okay, Nick, beautiful. better mute Go yourself. Your... Okay, <laughs> yeah, please mute yourself. He's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, this is so good. No, but I'm with you, Randy. I think, uh, do you think the reasons are mainly because of limited production? They don't want to have too many options? For it sure. I, think, I think what happened was they cared more about meeting their deadline for deliveries, which is important. Mm-hmm. But eventually that, that's, that's going to stop. They're going to be a, 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 a mature factory of having their uh, rotation pretty spot on. Mm-hmm. And with that, I, I would very much enjoy more color options again because they can afford to do it and still meet deadlines. In the past, you were paying a premium for the Model S and you were paying such right. thing that's like, listen, at least we can do is give you options. And even if some of them don't stick with color choices and stuff like that, like you are paying that premium. And then when we and when we got the Model 3 and there were still more options, they, they chose the best colors out of all of them. And I like that. And then they're like, all right, for us to meet production timelines and stuff like that here's the five base colors okay fine i do get it i understand but i think there's like a okay i finished a video for everyone's uh okay thank you nick (laughs) keep us posted um i think there was kind of a reverse effect because my guess is tesla kept the colors that were the most popular they probably kept around the ones that were getting ordered the most and removed the ones that were less common or maybe they weren't less common they were just more complex to paint you know that just it was mm-hmm. intricate that or the color was like hard to get used right to be really hard and then they made mm-hmm. it easier now it's the base one right so mm-hmm. after they remove those older colors those older colors now become exclusive and rare and now everyone's like oh wait you can't get that anymore oh i want that one now <laughs> like i wonder if That's that many people would actually <laughs> yeah if if people still had the option to get the regular silver not the midnight silver metallic um would it actually be that popular or is it I think popular the midnight now one is better in my opinion the but midnight silver you like more i like midnight better yes but i think silver should have replaced white oh i mm. heavily disagree with you there i so i'm white, polar opposite yeah white white is almost my favorite color um because it's really pure. And I I love the white Model Threes. Besides, if I if I couldn't get a Cybertruck and I was having to pick between you know what color Model Y I was going to get, um, it would definitely probably be white, if not red. White or red are the two my two weak points. Um, yeah, I agree with and you. And then silver, I, I, silver is come, honestly my favorite, but it's not available. So you know, every that. single Model Y person had to get like the blue one, and I don't know what it is, but the blue Model Y just looks too dark it's not like yeah. a vibrant blue in all the videos i've seen of it it comes across as this really really like desaturated blue and occasionally i'll see a photo or a video of uh, someone who had a white model y and it just looked so much better to me like huh. the colors popped a lot more and it looked like the, the panel effect. gaps were i don't know what right? it is maybe, maybe maybe because so many have blue and if it was the opposite maybe you'd, and people had so many white maybe you'd think the blue was better no I would just like. Nah. I would. <laughs> no. Nah. I'm just. No. A, I don't know. I don't like how they did the blue color with the Model Y. But uh, maybe I need to see it in person to formulate an opinion. Have Randy? Have Is, you spotted a Model Y yet? Not a single one. Ooh. So weird. Okay. So they're out well, there. It's almost like I you know for a fact the house yet, so. they're in your area. Well, even but before, you haven't seen before, one. people care more about the S's and the X's, and. You know, I think there's a case as to why they should still be around even today. To play devil's advocate with what I think I have addressed in the past, we all might have addressed it about how how um, you know uh, at, uh, three and Y cannibalizes S and X. They're mm-hmm. still they're still relevant today, and I think they serve a very important purpose today. And I think it even meets my demographic of people down here that n- need those i say need loosely prefer those over uh wire rich three. people <laughs> rich people no but even if, I wasn't gonna for, say it. even if the money was not that drastic i think uh-huh. the reason why um uh, there is a uh, people are keen to those he had to do it he had to do it <laughs> great hijack my topic so the reason why <laughs> is because people like yourselves need bigger vehicles i don't thank but... you yes oh. you can yes. you can have the little moped go-kart i'll take I will, it i will I'll take, take it. it that's fine okay <laughs> for the <laughs> but... record 
I don't think the Model S and X aren't relevant. I just think they're in need of updates. And there's still a place for them. I don't think they should go away. But if I had to guess on which Tesla will be discontinued next, I would put the X at the top. I think the X is the closest to being (sighs) unnecessary. The Model S has a bit of an excuse because it still has over the 3 and the Y and every other Tesla, like best range any EV hands down and it's going to be that way until either the roadster or cybertruck come out and now that they're working on the plaid model s you can kind of come at the model s with the angle of this is the performance vehicle it's like the performance four door and we have the roadster obviously but that's uh just just for zero to 60 you know (laughs) like that's that's for tv shows and that's for like weekend cars but if someone wants high performance insane range and they also want to have a really practical car. The Model S still suits that demographic really well, and I think it will still have a place even once the Model Y has gone mainstream and stuff. But the Model X, I think, will go away first because it's the biggest like party trick Tesla. Like it's but, practical. But I also think it's, it's the functional. biggest one for family. It is, but as Model Y approaches, that becomes less and less of a market. Yeah, but those doors, the opening of the doors and having more accessibility into the cabin, I feel like uh, people care more about for car seats and family stuff that we yeah. don't know about. But but I they're the, they're I, a blessing and a curse. There's there's a bunch of cool stuff with the doors, but there's also a bunch of issues and complaints people have with the doors. And I think the doors are mainly what makes the car so expensive. Um, so and the, the sorry. Go ahead, Nick. No, I'm sorry. I, I think we're having a lag or something. I'm done. That was my point. Oh, okay. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, there definitely must be a lag. Um, so I was thinking about well, how we could. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, Randy. Anyway, um, I don't think they'll get rid of the Model X. They're probably going to redesign it to be something simpler and maybe a little more cheaper um, to at least manufacture. Hmm. Um, because Elon loves that sexy lineup, and I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, I think for the foreseeable future, next 10, 15 years, there'll always be an S, X, 3, Y. If he can get the rights for E, it will definitely change to E faster than you can say 1, 2, E. Um, but... (laughs) (laughs) Boo! (laughs) That was terrible. Anyway, um, I think... I liked it. Elon said that the Model Y is the Fabergé egg. By that, he means it's way too complicated and took way too much time to make. You mean the X? The X. I'm sorry. Yes. What did I say? The Model X. That's why I'm here. Fabergé egg. Thank you. That's the only reason why I'm going to keep you around, Drew. That's the only reason at all. Um, Nick, are you inverted? You're inverted. Am I? Am I? The FaceTime will invert whenever you activate the Animoji thing. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Better now? He's good. Okay. You're good. I don't know. Sorry, man. Anyway, um, I'm trying to get to my point, which I almost forgot, but I remember Model, Model X y, over-engineered. Like, yeah, over-engineered. So I think they'll, you know, trim it back. Maybe get rid of the Falcon doors. Um, keep it, keep the update, update the interior or something. But they'll keep it more exclusive than the Model Y for sure, with more range and more power or something. But it's pretty close, is the thing. <laughs> is it the range? The range of the Model X without performance like 2.5. is. Uh, 351 miles and the Model Y is at 316 which I'm sure when it comes to weather and variables with range they're pretty dang close you're still going to be 300 miles from that's true if they brought a heat pump to the Model X that could help but um, I'm just wondering if they're going to bring that plaid powertrain to the X as well because it feels like they're only testing it and experimenting with the Model S because they can do like it can be like the direct Taycan Porsche competitor, yeah. whereas the Model X, a high performance SUV, it's there, but are they gonna do much with it, or is that gonna be the most like neglected Tesla out of the lineup? What do you think? Maybe Randy? it'll just become the iPod. I think. Um, I think they are using the S as like a, a a prototype of sorts to let's let's try it out. Let's try it out, and whatever works and whatever sticks. Um, I think I think they're gonna bring it really uh, to the next lineup of vehicles that they would be working on. Mm. If there would be a next lineup 
I don't think it would just stay solely exclusively for the S. I think, uh, as Nick said, uh, the, the sexy lineup is not going to go anywhere for a very long time. So yeah. with Agreed. that, they will stay there and they will they will exist in, in the environment of its time and, and be relevant. And as they move to newer innovations and newer technology and better efficiencies, et cetera, et cetera, stuff that they've learned from Plaid, stuff that they, uh, they've they learned from the Y, the three decks, everything that they can, they can now take the, the fundamentals of what they've learned of each model and they can bring that to a new lineup. And why do it on a new lineup and experiment when you can do it on – hi, said – yeah, why? Why? <laughs> why would you do that on a new lineup when you can still experiment with something that's not the highest selling product, which mm-hmm. would be X or, or, or uh, S? Try it out with those. Let those guys – because that's what the whole – that's what that thing was meant for in the first place. S was to help fund the ma- the main the masses of the next ones, right. and it still Higher serves profit. a purpose, right? So let the S exist for its function. As this is for you, select few who want to spend that extra, try it out, and then whatever we work it out, we'll bring it out to the the big waves of the the next wave of threes and Ys. But let the S still exist as the thing that we're trying out with them first and then move it forward from there. So if it's not going to be on a new new lineup, which I think they would do a new lineup, it would definitely – they work out the kinks with the S or maybe even the X and then bring that to the, the masses, which would be the 3 and the Y or whatever then takes its place, even the Cybertruck and stuff like that. I think the S's purpose, its sole existence is what it was initially released for in the first place – which is to help fund research, development, so R and D, and uh, beta testing for the bigger groups, which would be the the more economically cost efficient vehicles and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. in that sense, I I see them just throwing everything they can at the S for a long time, and then once they work out the kinks, all right, let's roll it over to the whatever it fits best, or maybe maybe at some point we can see them fit universally in all the models the same way full self-driving is a default it comes with at least with the hardware whether you just buy it or not is Mm -hmm. up to you but Mm. i think uh model s is going to be very useful for basically just uh letting the public and letting everyone know what evs can be it's already Mm -hmm. kind of served that purpose of like well evs have short range and they're not very slow like the model s continues to combat that because it's like hey this goes 391 miles from the plug, not from the pump. And yeah. here's the insane performance, and it's still really, really practical between the – it's got a powered uh, hatchback, and um, you can almost sit seven people in a Model S if you get that accessory in the back and stuff. Uh, but between or the like, panoramic – two full Nicks. Two there full you know, Nicks. Two of me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you still have a bunch of the functional benefits over that three. It's just it comes at a cost, but it, it kind of proves to people what uh, EVs can be. And as Tesla has shown, that will make its way down to the cheaper vehicles eventually in some way, shape, or form. Um, so I think 2020 is going to be an important year because it will show the first EV break 400 miles, which is kind of where – I think most gas cars sit range wise. Like most people don't even know what their range is on their gas vehicle. But I think it's because once you get past 400, people stop really thinking about it. And it just becomes yeah. a miles You're on per a road gallon. Trip. After 400 miles, you want to get out. <laughs> yeah, you typically want to stop at that point anyway. But it's like if you start getting above 400, that's when people don't care that much. Unless you're like towing something. And then, of course, the range gets, you know, shot in half. But, uh, yeah, Same I think Model S is going to be – not in half, but yeah. The Model S is going to be uh, around for a long, a lot longer. My only argument against the X is that maybe, yeah, they will have to bring some type of redesign. I think people would be really, really upset if they took away the Falcon doors. Like that would tick off a ton of people if they just said, eh, you know what? We're going to try to make the X more practical now. Um, in my opinion, they would be better off – making a different SUV in a different lineup uh, if they wanted to make something that's at a lower price but also sit more people than the Model Y can. Because the Model Y is basically a five-seater 
technically will get to seven if you have small children. But um, yeah, there are people out there that want something that can, you know, comfortably sit seven, maybe more. Um, in that case, I would say some type of, uh, I want uh, like a, a cyber truck with a, a third row instead of a bed, I think would be an interesting Ooh, approach. So but cyber van. Ooh. I see. That, I don't know if I'd call it a van. It'd still be a sport utility vehicle, but maybe Would it could the bed be a van. Only be like halfway as large, or I'd say no bed with the triangle. There's no my bed. ultimate Tesla vehicle I would ever want. <laughs> oh my god! I I, got excited. <laughs> I, I, I think we, we talked about it here or there, but uh, I would love, and I it's going to be expensive every way you 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 slice this. But I want a Tesla RV. <gasps> <laughs> oh. Like a motor Would that be much different from trailer? the semi? Yes, because you can live. <laughs> you could live in a Model Three if you want to. But this is true. This yeah, is I think true. Uh, in regards to things they will make in the future, RVs probably at the very bottom of <laughs> the list. I think the RV would run the cost of a home, a regular home. Wow. I- Cal- California. That's a lot. Homes. Sorry. Jeez. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Five hundred thousand dollars. What? Are we talking Bay Area or SoCal? <laughs> 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 the very different prices. Uh, SoCal. SoCal. Okay. Okay. Reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable. I, because an RV right now can start at like one twenty uh, for like what? basic amenities. No. A nice RV is seventy thousand. This, this is getting into the finance topic, but I just want to say that. Uh, buying a house that is equal price to an RV, an RV. is still is still yeah, a better good. deal because yeah. if it's got wheels, it's going to depreciate. Whereas if you got a foundation, it will appreciate more than likely over time. Which so, is why you buy. A hey, if you got money to buy and... boats and yachts, then you're <laughs> yes, buy... this is a luxury item for sure. But it'd be cool, just a camping trip. The whole like imagine, imagine. Let me just paint a, a scenario for you guys. We get a Telosive RV that we take around, <laughs> and we not work. just for our meetups, but let's say we want to travel the country and do meet and greets or whatever. That sounds great. Live. Sign me up. I'd do that with the Tesla Semi. I could just build a a shipping container out the back. We just do like a I want us to live like luxury, Drew. Give us the the. This is I think luxury. About the tech. It would, think it about would look the, luxurious. I think about the, the, the screen that's in the Model 3 and Y, and imagine the type of minimalism they would put inside the RV, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> my heart's oh. They're not going to do that It would have been while, like Johnny Ive and Steve Jobs designed it or something. It'll be, yeah, that would Except be a high price. Johnny's next like, client. And, and, uh, Tesla's board. That's yeah. a Tesla's board vehicle. We're going to make this just because we can, which is a long ways away. <laughs> but when it comes to like... Just the day to day vehicles they're releasing now. Do you think the Cybertruck is like a, a one off design, no. or do you think that's the beginning of a new lineup? Like Hashtag more cars cyber. coming with stainless steel exoskeleton? Cybertruck, cyber van, cyber sedan, cyber hatchback. I know. Cyber. You've made There's your position everything. very clear. Cybertruck! <laughs> <laughs> but do you th- like legitimately, Randy? Do you think they're gonna do that, or do you think so? I'm not. This is a, a one-time thing. Okay, go ahead. Randy. I think it's a one-time thing for a very long time. Um, this oh, okay. was this was a this was a a um a statement that they were doing with it that they they went into it with knowing that like it's not gonna be your normal truck right from the get go. It doesn't even look like it fits in with the rest of the cars they've released. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't. And no. the reason why I think it's a one-off is there was something becoming, as Elon addressed, there was something that was becoming fundamentally uh, wrong, or I wouldn't say flawed, but there was no there was no updates to a truck for a long time. I don't mm-hmm. think we have that same issue with cars. Cars get all these weird bells and whistles all the time. And the mm-hmm. truck doesn't need bells and whistles. It needed to be a utility, but also practical. And what's right. more practi- practical than like, how can we cut costs and, and not make curve? Like, they came at it with a, a, a legit vision. Mm-hmm. And 
the 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 end result, the product is a result of the vision, not the other way around. And mm. that I is see. why it's it, that's that's the reason why it, it's a one off because unless you can find here's what we have wrong with a car now, and, and it's possible that can happen, but I don't think we have that issue the same way we have an issue with a truck as it is right now. You've made my wife, well, not you guys, but Tesla, you made my <laughs> wife a tech, a techie <laughs> who she doesn't care about any of this stuff, you know? Yeah. She doesn't share it, and she's like, I'm selling everyone I can on this truck because she goes, this makes sense. I've saw the light bulb go off on her, and that's when it made me think that someone who's, she's the closest thing to a normal, you know, uh, pool of, of doing like a survey, like, okay, let me try if what, what you respond to tells me more about what normal people, not enthusiasts like us would respond to. And the mm-hmm. fact that she responded so intensely to it, and it wasn't just Nick being, ah, and she's doing the same thing. It's like, okay, <laughs> this means it, it, it's, 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 it's pleasing both the enthusiasts like the Ann Sweeney's and the, the, the normal crowd of people who care about that type of stuff, because on paper, mm-hmm. and I'm sure in execution, it just makes sense. You can't see the same thing about sedans and coupes and stuff like that on a cyber lineup, in my opinion. There's not something fundamentally wrong that the EV market as it stands today and the models aren't already addressing, besides incremental updates and stuff like that. There was something fundamentally um, needing to be updated and addressed with the cyber truck. Mm-hmm. And, and again, the vision scoped the end product, not the other way around. And I think that's why it is what it is. And we won't get that all the time. Definitely for a very, very long time. Okay. So we're not going to get more cyber vehicles for, what, another 10 years? No. I don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Maybe. We're five. The commuter Maybe vehicle five. has to be cyber inspired. Please, Elon. Yeah, I'm begging. Would you? Be cool if, they did, if, if they did it just like, hey, you can have the exoskeleton because why not? We're, we're throwing things on Mars now at this point. I think they want to see just, how it goes, is my guess. Yeah, they probably, for sure. They probably see the cyber lineup as a possibility, but they want to go through manufacturing and mass scale of the cyber truck and see like, okay, is this as easy as we think it's going to be? Or are there parts we're missing? And if... Um, the customers get it and they really enjoy it. And people are like, hey, this rugged exoskeleton thing was a good idea. It's so durable and practical and it makes sense and it keeps the price low. And if they just get positive feedback from it, then they'd be like, okay, let's bring this to other things. But um, maybe there's unforeseen issues with the design that are like, oh man, we didn't realize this part of manufacturing would be so tricky or this part, or there's a shortage of this uh, supply or whatever. But um yeah, my that's my best guess is that they Can want to see how this does. Can you imagine if Cybertruck does to the industry what iPhone did to the industry and everything going forward <laughs> becomes sharp and it's just like I they single-handedly people, changed it. It's inevitable that companies will copy this. Other oh, other car I brands think. are going to start following along with it because of how much demand there has been for it. And there's pretty much no other vehicle similar to it. So eventually the, uh, other automakers are going to see the success and the demand and they're going to be like okay well the cyber truck needs some type of competition we need to make a you know low polygon rugged exoskeleton ev that's better than the cyber truck hopefully they catch on i don't know maybe some of the legacy autos are too traditional and they just say no no that's not how tricks should look it doesn't matter if they you know sell hundreds of thousands of them and everybody's buying them and loving them but Nick, would you buy a cyber sedan or a cyber van if one came out? Or wouldn't you just want to stick with the truck in the first place? Honestly, I'd have to see it and seeing how I flip-flop on everything, and that's kind of my shit. <laughs> probably this will change in the future. But where I'm sitting now, the cyber truck is my dream car. And honestly, even if I ended up with a wife and 25 kids, I, I would imagine that... Uh, <laughs> You're Mormon? <laughs> no i didn't say 25 wives i said a wife and 25 kids uh, <laughs> um listen to what i say randy um no um i totally got derailed there good job randy <laughs> I, I think that the cyber truck you know it seats six um five very comfortably because the back seat is just so spacious and i know this from yeah. other pickup trucks three adults easily fit in the back seat with plenty mm-hmm. of leg room and that middle seat in the front is the only uncomfortable one but so it's five very good seats as long as i have fewer than five people in my entire family five or fewer 
I would I would say I would never need another vehicle now. Someone else in my family might want a different vehicle, which is fine, and they'd have to pick a Tesla because that's the only way this is working. You have to pick a Tesla. <laughs> but the right. Cybertruck, like, it does everything that I want. It, the only thing that the Cybertruck does not do is it's big. Like, I like my little compact, subcompact SUV, Ford Escape. What? It fits what? so nicely in little parking what? spots. What? 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 You just crapped yeah. on the Model Y because it wasn't big enough. Well, okay. Physically, interior is different get him, than get dimensions. Yeah, get get them, get them, <laughs> give me. Um, so the model, the the, 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 the interior <laughs> is the what the part that I'm looking at, right? Like, okay, interior needs to be big. Cybertruck has big interior. None of the other cars really have a big interior. Now I'm seeing more in-person videos of the Model Y. It's looking a little bit more roomy than I originally gave it credit for. So hey! maybe it is plenty. <laughs> maybe it is plenty big. <laughs> there enough. it is. But the <laughs> physical dimensions of the outside of the vehicle um, are small, which is nice for both my Ford Escape and the Model Y and Model 3. Fit it easily in and out of parking spots, not a big deal. Cybertruck, though, 19 and a half feet long by 6 and a half feet wide by mm-hmm. 6 feet tall. It's a honking truck. It's enormous, which will mean parking is going to be about my least favorite part of owning the Cybertruck, but I'm going to love every other every other aspect of it. So. Mm. I think, yeah, a smaller, like, cyber van would be cool because it would stick with the design scheme of the Cybertruck somehow and also be a little more practical, you know, kind of more soccer mom style, like, you know. I forgot the original question because of what you were doing, and then I was like, oh, cyber van. It's like, I spin around all the time. This is the point. I got to keep I don't want van. I want SUV. SUV, cyber SUV. Yeah, all all those things. But I think I'm going to keep the truck. I don't know. I don't know what else I'll have in my household at some point, but you know, cyber, cyber, everything, please. <laughs> so it's okay. Nick, it's do you okay want a if... cyber home? <laughs> yes, yeah. please. Actually, there was there was on Instagram. I saw this cyber house that like totally fits like the cyber truck parks underneath it, and it's like all stainless yeah, steel. Yeah. Well, I'm starting to yes. notice any low polygon count concept is like Cybertruck inspired this Cybertruck yeah. inspired. It's like okay, now we're just saying Cybertruck anytime Cyber we truck. mean sharp and boxy. You know, that's just well. Then I've been inspired by Cybertruck for my drawing because I can't draw worth of nothing. Is everything like sharp angles and stuff? So for now on, I will say good. like I'm going to use that excuse. Cybertruck's really easy to draw compared to other pickups. To make like a decent photograph of a pickup versus a cyber truck, it's like I know the exact angles to do, to use. <laughs> we make sharp <laughs> angles in 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 corners because we don't cut corners in the cyber. Room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's no cutting corners. But yeah, so don't worry about there not being a cyber lineup because you'd probably pick the truck anyway, right? Yep. Yeah. I so that yeah, no harm done. Let it be a unique thing if it needs to be. Make it be special. What about you? Yes. Would you do it, Drew? Uh, the only reason I would go with a cyber sedan over a Model 3 is if there was uh, cost measures involved. So I feel like there should be. If they're able to compact all of the amazing Cybertruck tech into a you know potentially, eventually, $40,000 truck, um, take out the air compressor. Take out the adaptive air suspension. Take out the bed. Um, just give it coil suspension, and let it be a little bit smaller. Let it seat five. Let it sit lower to the ground. And there's no paint. It's just a rugged, you know, stainless steel outside. It just sits a lot lower. I don't exactly know how it would look, but if they made it look Cybertruck esque, but like if you could provide me better range for the price then yes, I would go with a cyber sedan over a Model 3. But if it was like more expensive to go with the exoskeleton, nah, I would just take the, the regular Model 3. So I guess cost would be my primary driving factor. I'm not really I, – I, I'm kind of into the pickup. I would I would like to have the Cybertruck someday, but I'm not the type of guy that would need a cyber SUV. I, I wouldn't need a nine-seater or a eight-seater or whatever. Like a 15-passenger like, I, I van. 
I've never been in a situation where I need to move that many people, unless, of course, I'm like Nick and have 25 children. But uh, <laughs> until then, I I'm joking, guys. Come on. it's it's for the most part been me and my wife, and honestly, Nick's like winters are really long. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, <laughs> Randy, no uh, Randy. <laughs> Like, oh my my point is, um, Nick, my let's goodness. find something else to talk about, please. The, any, okay, <laughs> here you go. Model Y, I, I like a lot, and that would be like my ideal Tesla, but at the same time, we have a standard trunk with no frunk on our Hyundai, and there's never been a time where I'm like, oh, dang, this can't hold enough stuff. We need more I wish I had a seats. frunk. <laughs> I wish I had a frunk. Like, I just, we load our groceries in the back, usually just put them on the back seats, and... Uh, we may have kids someday, but we got some time before then. We got quite a bit Put of time before then. Your kids in the front then. too. Yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> can sit in the front. Problem solved. Problem exactly. Solved. <laughs> you try driving with the front open, and it's not a pleasurable experience. Oh, no, I didn't. Man. I I would be shocked. The car would let you do that. I was hoping the sensors would like guide me. Nope. <laughs> the radar. I mean, is like, my like, friend. I can see he was, either. My friend was trying that, and he said the sensors weren't. Yeah, I had a friend. Yeah, I had a <laughs> True. Friend. See what had happened was. What had happened was. Do you have any closing thoughts? I do. I have one. Let me. Okay. Pull up. Um, Let's hear it. Fourteen hours ago, at nineteen percent on my car, I finally plugged in the one ten mm-hmm. outlet, not the two twenty, just because. Okay. I'm doing doing laundry, and I'm just it's been. Mm-hmm. It's been a very long time since I just put in an outlet. Just curious. Yeah. It's told me 24 plus hours remaining until it was done charging to 80%. Mm-hmm. 14 hours later, I went from 19 to 39%. When we first started the episode, okay. this particular wow. episode, I was at 37. So I went up mm-hmm. 2%. Charging. Time remaining, 24 plus hours. Still. So, <laughs> that is still so that's thing. 20% every how many hours? 14 so uh every every seven hours i went up 10 percent statistically wow okay okay yeah that's over 24 that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> by a good amount okay thanks for the update I just wa- and thanks I, I, for I just listening. wanted to test it and see um i'm sure by the time we re- can you imagine next week we record uh the next ev episode and i'm like okay i'm eight hours away now <laughs> <laughs> you cannot charge this car slower i don't know how you could But uh, thank you for listening, everyone. We'll chat with you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay clean. Stay very clean. Wash your hands.